All right. It worked. For some reason, I had a tough time going live, but we are here now. So I'm going to give it a few minutes if people are trying to get on. Um, but we're going to talk about uh, some things today. We're going to talk about the Oregon Trail, which was the game that uh, was the assignment for this week. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about my blog and how reading is important to keep going throughout the summer. We're going to talk about Declaration, Constitution, Bill of Rights, um, if we get to that. So I'll just give it a few minutes and let people get on. And while we're doing that, I'm going to share the link to Google Classroom. So, and if you're watching this later, if you're watching this after the fact, then uh, then that's fine too. You can also send a comment in either publicly on the Google Classroom or leave a comment uh, on this video, either way. So let's get it on here. And that just went to prime time. So now I'll put the link out on the social studies group. And here we go. I have one person watching. So whoever's watching, hello. Um, first, we're going to talk about the Oregon Trail. Now, if you're older than about 25 years old, you've probably played the Oregon Trail. Uh, it's a old school game, but it's a lot of fun where you're you're traveling the Oregon Trail and you have all kinds of different things that can happen. Mm -hmm. To start off, you can be, I believe, a carpenter, a banker, or a farmer. And basically, those are the hardness levels. Uh, if you're a banker from Boston, you start out with the most money. And before you can travel the trail, you have to uh, buy supplies. Trent, hello. You have to buy supplies before you can go on the trail. And then once you start on the trail, you can trade those supplies. Uh, you can buy more supplies when you're at a different location. Um, but but the price might be a little different. and. Uh, Different things can happen while you're on the trail. You can have your oxen run away. You can have your, your wagon catch on fire. People can get sick. Um, so the assignment this week was to play the Oregon Trail three times and be each one of those people. So each one of the, the hardness levels and then tell us how you did. And that was super interesting. And I had a student, um, Blair, made it all the way to Oregon and he made it on the top 10 list. So that's pretty awesome. Congratulations to Blair. Um, and then at the very end, I said, write three to five sentences comparing or contrasting the Oregon Trail to the hardships we're experiencing today with the COVID pandemic, where everybody's locked down, businesses are closed, schools are shut down, the whole nine yards. So that's what I'm going to cover first today. And there were some really interesting uh, observations. I'm just going to read some of them in no particular order. Um, if you hear yours, that's awesome. You can comment if you if you want to, but you don't have to. So three to five sentences comparing or contrasting. First one, for me, because I have everything a person needs, this time really isn't that hard, except for knowing that people out there have nothing and are dealing with the coronavirus. One example that the Oregon Trail is similar to now is that there's a spread of disease going around and lots of people are dying. Just like the video game, how you lose a lot of stuff due to a bump in the road. It's like we lose our sense of happiness and belonging when we run over a metaphorical bump in the road. I thought that was awesome. Trent, why did you why did you spill your drink? Did I say something that was funny? Um, so that was a really interesting uh, observation. Second one, the Oregon Trail was way more difficult than the hardships we're facing today. Right now, we can pretty much do anything except to the big events and stuff where there's a lot of people. They had to deal with getting many diseases where we're just trying to worry about one virus. They had to worry about wagons and oxen and floods where we really don't have to worry about that stuff. They also had to worry about even making it to Oregon. We can pretty much go anywhere we want. That's so true. So true. So 
yeah, when you look at the Oregon Trail versus today, you know, I woke up this morning and I had warm coffee. I had a hot shower. I had clean clothes. They didn't have any of that in Oregon. If you wanted hot water, you had to make a fire. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll read one more and then we'll move on to the next part. So the Oregon Trail compares to the hardships we are experiencing today because due to the COVID-19, we have to sort of ration our food and cleaning supplies. Soap, paper towel, Clorox, wipes, toilet paper, hand sanitizer. Also, there were many diseases along the Oregon Trail and there are many diseases in the world today as well. That's very true, especially the rationing thing. Um, you know, I've I've had on our shopping list for months now Clorox wipes, and every time I go to the store, I look, and every time they don't have them. Uh, so, when you look at the grocery store, they generally have all the food we need, but most people are trying to go, limiting their time to go into the grocery store, where maybe they used to go to the grocery store every every other day or every third day. Now people are trying to spread that out over maybe once a week. So. Uh, very, very different. So that is the Oregon Trail. I was really impressed with how some of you did. It was uh, very enlightening to see your insight in comparing and contrasting the Oregon Trail to what we're dealing right now. You can always link stuff back to history. So the second part I want to talk about is reading. And uh, basically, this is a plug for my blog. So reading is so important. It's so important, and I think that you should be reading every day if you can. Um, I try to read every day. Sometimes I fail, and I know it's really hard with the weather being so nice and wanting to get outside and play, especially since we've been locked up. But if you can take just even 10 minutes a day and read, um, it's just so beneficial. So if you read, if you read something you like, fiction, if you read a book, uh, nonfiction, fiction, historical, uh, fantasy, whatever you like to read, please, please read. And if you need something to read, here's the shameless plug for my blog, posting it in the comments section. Uh, I restarted my blog since working at home. I never felt like I had enough time when I was at school, but now I want to kind of try to keep it going. And if you look on the blog, you'll see uh, it starts with the newest post first, okay? So you have to work your way down, but I'm currently doing a series on the Constitution, something that maybe maybe we've talked about before, okay? Um, and before that, I did a, a series on the Declaration of Independence, okay? I just, I think those two documents are so important to understand where we came from as a country. Like, why was our country founded? Um, and I think, I know, if you've been in my classroom, you've heard me talk about this before, but the Third Amendment says we can't quarter soldiers. Well, that seems absolutely ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, unless you know your history and can point back to the Quartering Act, where citizens were expected to house British soldiers, give them food, give them candles, give them firewood, and even give them cider and beer. Like, that was a thing. That really happened. So... It makes sense that it's in this book saying that we can't do it anymore. So um, the blog, if you read one post a day, it'll probably take you three to five minutes to read a post, but keep keep reading uh, whatever it is. Just keep reading. Let's try. I found these in stock if you want to try and get them. You found what in stock, Trent? You got to post a link or I can't see it, man. So Declaration of Independence. Uh, if you still have this, hopefully you do. Um, we marked them up if you were in class. But it's it's really interesting. And if you go to the blog, I've I've kind of broke it down so that we can uh, we can better understand it. But you know, it talks about all the different all the different things that were happening to the colonies and how they tried to they tried to settle their differences, but in the end in the end, they just flat out, they couldn't. If you remember the last, the last thing they sent out was called the Olive Branch Petition saying, hey, you really gotta, you really gotta stop treating us like a tyrant. And King George came back and said, uh, no. And actually, I think you're treasonous and here we come. So uh, the declaration, super important. You know, it tells us where we were before we were even a country. And then the constitution is kind of the second, 
the second part of that and that where where we went uh, and if you remember and i talk about it in the i talk about it in the blog but the articles of confederation you know we started off way over here with tyranny and king george telling us everything like you have to buy this kind of tea you can't even buy a different kind of tea like, what all the way to this end with the articles of confederation where hey states you're on your own you know you do you bro and then how those two things come to the center with the constitution so i just really think it's so important um it's such an important document and with all the craziness going on if you watch the news for 10 minutes, if you watch C-SPAN, if you watch any politician for more than 10 minutes, they're, they're, um, you know, they're referencing things and we got to make sure that it's constitutional and it's a beautiful thing, our, our three branches of government. So there's my plug for my blog and, and the constitution. So Trent, you found, you found out. A website for wipes hey that's awesome so i think we're gonna make do um they just came out i believe yesterday the cdc said that they didn't think the coronavirus was uh stuck to surfaces that much uh so and there's the other thing with reading like you can read 10 news 10 news articles saying that you should wear a mask. Then you can read 10 news articles that says you shouldn't wear a mask and 10 news articles saying you should go outside and 10 news articles saying you should stay inside. So it's really hard to understand what the truth is, but I think it's important to be a consumer of all of those ideas. And like I've told you from day one in my classroom, take in all those ideas and then form your own opinion, but make sure it's an educated opinion. Don't just say, I believe this. And when somebody asks why you can't defend it. Um, so with that, I am going to finish off by reading a post from my blog. So this is like another another plug for it. Um, and if, if you get a kick out of it, you can go to the link, which is posted in the comments. Um, it's all over my Twitter. It's, it's pretty easy to find. And you can read more of it. So I'm going to read the Declaration of Independence Part 1. Okay, so that's my first, there's five parts to the declaration that I wrote about, and there's going to be 10 parts to the constitution when I'm done. I think I'm on part three or four right now. Um, so part one, the declaration of independence, when in the course of human events. Okay, I'm just going to read my post. The declaration of independence is not an easy read. It is not easy because it was written almost 250 years ago. Despite its difficulty, it's one of the most influential documents ever written, and arguably one of, if not the most influential document that formed the United States of America. An argument could be made for the Constitution, but without the Declaration of Independence, there would be no Constitution. Thomas Jefferson was the primary author of the Declaration of Independence, although many others contributed. I'll be publishing the Declaration of Independence in a five-part series with my commentary in an attempt to help explain one of the greatest documents ever written with some understandable clarity. Part one, when in the course of human events, the Declaration of Independence is basically a letter to King George III stating or declaring that the colonies are sick and tired of the tyranny and the lack of voice in terms of governing and the colonies are going to govern themselves. They are not asking, they have already tried that. They are telling him. King George III reacted by calling them traitors and sending the most powerful army in the world after them. Here is the first part of that letter. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the cause which impelled them for separation. The first sentence is 71 words long. Every nine through 12 English teacher is face palming right now, but it's a sentence that sets up the rest of the document quite well. So what does it say? I've copied it below and inserted my own layman terms to help us understand. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them to another. When things happen that require one group to leave another group 
In other words, when the American colonists have had enough tyranny from King George that they have no other choice but to leave. And to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. That means when a group leaves, they have the power to do things for themselves and they don't need to rely on others because they have the law of nature and the law of God who gave everyone certain things. And uh, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them for separation. And that means if a group is going to leave, then it is the respectable thing to do to tell or declare why they are leaving. That's it. That's part one. It says, learn more in part two. We hold these truths to be self-evident, which we'll publish next week. So that published a while ago now on April 1st. And I've been publishing one new episode or one new post every week. Um, again, the first five are on the Declaration, and the next ten will be on the Constitution. So that goes back to my reading. If you can read some stuff uh, every day, read, 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 and make educated decisions. So that's uh, that's good stuff. I see I have two two people watching live right now. So I know Trent is one of them and somebody else is, is just a lurker, which is totally fine. I'm going to end the stream here and post it up on Google Classroom so that uh, if you missed it, sorry, you missed it, uh, but you can, you can watch it. So hopefully you watch it and then you read something, maybe my blog. And if you're brave enough, go ahead and leave a comment right on my blog. I have zero comments so far, which I find really interesting because I've had some pretty good readership. For instance, that part that I just read you has 159 reads. Uh, so no comments yet. Nobody's been brave enough yet. That's all right. So I hope you have a good week. Get out in the sunshine and enjoy your day.